Hey, Brand here. Uh, what I wanted to talk about is we were thinking about this for a while. Um, our Paleolithic ancestors, Neolithic, uh, the Native Americans, uh, uh, even in Viking culture and early Germanic culture, we hear about Freyr, Fror, uh, Frico is what they're called, uh, the Lord. He's the uh, Lord of Fertility. He fights with an antler at the end of the world because he fell in love with Gerth. And uh, Gerth, uh, being a giant, just didn't want to go with him. And he had to give up his sword that was a gift to him that actually fought on its own. So, But he actually killed uh, Belly, I believe, with an uh, antler. And we also see in, uh, uh, what was it, uh, William Wallace by uh, what was it, Mel Gibson who did his version. He has him ride in or walk in and use a a uh, antler to kill a man. So what we want to do is see how effective these are as weapons. I mean, I can already see that you know you can use it different ways. I mean, I could see how this could be used to maybe even as an offhand weapon to help hook a blade, because we were testing it out and this material is very resilient. Let me do that again a little bit and hack at it. But uh, I was reading that they tested this as a use for weapons, saying that uh, a wet femur bone that this actually took six times the force to break it and that it actually gave more than it broke. It actually, because deer actually fight with these, it's a weapon for the animal. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to test it, see different methods of how it can be used, if it can impale something, uh, sharpen better, or if you can just use it just the way it is, or little pieces used. So we're just going to do a few things real quick and test it out and see what we'll do. And that way we don't waste our mediums and we have something interesting to do and want to do for a while. And uh, I bet you any culture, if you go back far enough, has used antler for, for knife handles, uh, for weapons by itself, and so on. So let's see what we can do today with this stuff. Alrighty. Uh, in an appropriate manner here, we have our uh, pork from the other day. And I guess that honors Frey because he fought with an uh, uh, antler, or will fight with an antler at the end of the world and has fought with one and uses uh, his main weapon. Uh, I'm going to see if it'll actually thrust into this flesh here. Uh, this is slightly sharpened. I actually took the liberty. Uh, the actual deer do this themselves. They will grind it against stuff to get points, to get their points sharpened up. So let's see what it does if I try to thrust it in. Ah, that felt nasty. Let's see what we got. It hit the bone. That is into the bone there. That's what stopped me. Which I'm going to leave it there and pull it out. I got that kind of penetration, but that went up into the bone. Let's see if I can hit some meat with no bone in it. It'll be a better job. Oh, came up off the bone again, sorry. It's hard to aim with this thing, what do you expect? The platform's moving on us and so on. See if I can get where I can get some better meat here. It wants to curve due to the nature of it. But let's see what we got with this. Pretty deep and pale here. Ah, uh, good two and a quarter uh, inches or so. Let's see if I can do something better with this. See if it, I have an idea. What if someone were to use it this way? So I was thinking about it. This would be a good way to actually catch something. I mean, you might get cut, but you could actually catch stuff with it. It'd probably be easier to catch it this way and bind a weapon or something. But let's see with this, with a little more power, we could come in this way. If I use the proper angle of the thing. Ah! Uh, yeah. With that method, I'm here. And I know I pushed it through, but it was so thin it was already there. We got a full impale on that. With that method, yes. That gave extreme power to me coming down this way and following the angle. It's a little harder to follow the angle this way. I think we would have got a better piercing even through this, which I think we did it again. I followed the angle. I think we've discovered the secret here. This one is right here. I mean, you can see it, but I'm just pushing it through the last little bit. I mean, it, it didn't, it pretty much made it, but just didn't make it through all the tissue at the back when it hit the wood. So we've got another full impale. That's the secret. I was trying to push it this way and letting it slide. You have to pretty much follow the, it seems like you have to follow the actual alignment, if y'all guys could see with the uh, spike, because they're curved. So this would have to come up. Man, when you're fighting with this, it'd probably be even better to use it like this, possibly. You know, if you made it into a blade or something, where you can see that and... Let's see what I did right there? I just didn't thrust that hard, and I've got it almost all the way through. Not too shabby. 
I could see how this would work as a weapon quite well. I mean, even if you had to use other parts of it to punch with or so on, but I doubt it's going to impale it without the sharpening. But I mean, you can use it for whatever. Let's go ahead and try a bigger one out and see what it does without it being sharpened if we get the same results. Okay, we've got our larger, heavier version here. It hasn't been sharpened. It's just going to be me trying to see if I can push this through here, which I think it's going to be a little harder. But now we figured out how it has to go to go through, we'll see. That's not sharpened at all. And I got it through the back side. That's just the natural sharpness of this one. But as for how thick our meat is, we don't have thicker meat to go deeper. But not bad. I'm saying this is working pretty effective as a material. And remember, this one isn't sharpened. This, is just, this spike looks nasty. And I just think about this coming down and hitting me. And that makes me cringe. But anyway. Let's say if this was used as an offhand weapon and you had a good blade in the other hand and had the reverse where it fits your arm good, I could see that used as an actual weapon and be effective to help in some way. Let's see. I'm going to try going straight through here, and this is to honor Frey, as I said, for all. See if we can, I want to get a good piece where we got lots of meat. Heck, with this one as stout as it feels, I might try in the bony area and see if we can just do something amazing here and go through it or something. Now remember this bone has been cracked once, but we went through bone. I just drove this through a bone. I don't know if y'all can see the bone that it's joined to it. I drove that through the actual bone. Now we did crack the bone before with shark and this is the same piece of meat. Uh, but I'm looking at what we've done here and I think this is amazing. <laughs> that's nasty. But remember that's with me able to put full force in like a dagger style motion instead. I'm gonna try it again. Ah! Clean through and we even have an indentation into the wood. And that's unsharpened, that's just a really heavy antler. That is for penetration. Over three inches. I think this is a very effective weapon material. I mean, for a primitive time period, when you don't have uh, the necessity, or if you just had one and you managed to get a hold of a broken antler, or you had uh, hunted a deer and you had this left over, it's effective for a punching mechanism or anything like that. Ugh! Another good punch. I think it's working great. We have our ballistics gelatin from the other video. And I'm going to see how, how deep it goes into this. <coughs> ah, it looks like we cut up and into here. I might try turning it because it looks like it's going to turn on me when I do it. I'll set it up here. Remember, this thing is still damaged from the other video. I haven't really melted it or anything. You're really not supposed to do that because um, it affects you're going to the lose accuracy of your yes. test, too. And we, we, don't have a, we don't have a air rifle that shoots 590 feet per second which I said that wrong last time, I didn't mean to, uh, with a .77 uh, caliber pellet. So it's kind of hard for us to actually test for sure. We just go by recipes and hope that it's correct. Okay, let's see what ah! okay, I went clean through and I hit the wood. It put a nice hole in the wood and that's as far as it would go because of the wood. We would have got deeper penetration in uh, ballistics gel. And as you see, we got a rip around it because this isn't an edge cutting it or something. Let's go ahead because there's no point in just keep going with that. We already know it's going to go clean through. We pr I'm pretty sure I know what this is going to do. Ah! Straight through, hit the wood, same thing. And we went deeper in the meat because it was actually a deeper rub. But now remember this one is sharpened. We can go ahead and try the other one out. Just to, for, I, know, I think it's going to do the same thing. I'm going to try the same thing again with the unsharpened one. This is just a natural sharpening and it's more rounded than the other one. But it's a very stout one, so it gives less. Let's see how it works. Uh, yeah, we got this all the way through. It stopped because of the wood. And we even got part of that one cutting in over here. Do I buy this one in a real person? Probably not. I believe it would push in the person, bruise them, maybe. Ballistic gel tends to rupture easily. 
And for our control, because we're going to do it, and you know we will, we'll go back over here and try the same kind of uh, sword type attack, like a knife hand or sword hand type thing with a hammer blow. See what we get. Ah! And of course, we already know that has uber power and this thing's getting more and more damage that went clean through. But I do know this for a fact, if you walked up to a person, you couldn't slowly push it through them, I really doubt, unless you had all your body weight behind it and you were standing on top of them or something, I don't know. Ballistic shell tends to do that, it's better under high velocity, whereas the meat, I couldn't just walk up there and push this through it. It's going to behave more like human flesh or your leg or something. But anyway, I think this is a good test. And I think we've proven that this stuff would be uh, a weapon. It's definitely amplify your energy. Even if it didn't go through the person, it would be painful. I mean, you would have some kind of damage. I think it would pierce flesh at least. It would, you, would, you would get some damage. And I think it would actually impale somebody with the right force. I think a person's capable of doing it. It doesn't take a deer to kill you with an antler. Hey, going over this as a weapon more here, uh, Elgrim came up with an idea. Uh, using a small piece, kind of like you see these uh, little coupatons or any kind of small instrument or poking tool or whatever, this could be used for combat as well and hit on a person. You'd have it on a key ring, no one would say anything about it. A uh, necklace or whatever, but I'm saying a necklace would be hard to get off of But if you had it and it was concealed and God didn't know it and you were idea, you could come up here and put that kind of pressure in here, this kind of thing. Any of this stuff would be damaging. But thrust, I mean, the kind of material is that could even possibly pierce it if I come in solid. Uh, there's all kinds of pressure points where you can use it, and it's just really nice stuff. I'm sorry, I had his arm like that if I got it down. But I'll just say, this pain is different than me pushing on you with my fingers and my thumbs and stuff like that. You feel it totally different. Oh, it gives you a way to pinch and grip, too? Yeah, if you came in and did that, yeah. Or pinch and grip, I mean, hell, the guy got a hold of you. And you had to get a hold of him, and I get him in here. I... And then I do something like you always see these uh, police officers do, grab a finger or something. What I'm doing is I'm making a little bar here on his finger to bend it backwards to break it. I can do the same thing with any of the other fingers as well. It's hard to get that position, but if you get it, it's nasty. Oh, you can feel it's, that bone grinding yeah. against your but own. But you can use it for a little tool. I mean, anything. I mean, you could use this to... This is this is actually a tool for working chert, isn't it? Yes, this is what I use to make uh, chert arrowheads with. Yeah, so I'm just saying, but our ancestors used this material as a tool, and it's very valued to them. It's so valued that the story of Freyr, Frey, Phil, Thor, uh, actually includes uh, an antler as yeah. a weapon. But it's also symbolic. We know it's it's more than that. But I believe they used them as weapons, and that's why the whole idea was there, not just that it was, you know, of nature, of you know, the stag represents him, the boar. Yeah. But, you know, we do this in honor of Frey today, and we'll say, Hail Frey. Hail Frey. And Hail to our and said, Fardell. Uh, we figured this would be a good little uh, outro here of doing the other video, coming into this one, and doing some more testing, a little more use out of our material before we have to. We'd we like to thank all of our this. sponsors and donations from Patreon and everything. That's what's helped us make our gel now, and, and we're moving, moving up in the world, I, I guess you could say. Oh, definitely. It's helped us with the gel. It's helped us with more materials. Uh, we never waste anything, so don't feel like you're your money is out, waste. and then we're not going to use it, or we're going to buy something that's just. You, we'll cook yeah. down that that gelatin and reuse as much as we can. If it's yeah, roast, it's, we're going to cook it and, and 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 eat of its flesh. So I mean, correct. We'll everything do is what quickies. we can do with what we have, and you know, try to be as accurate as possible. That's what we try to do: is be as historically accurate as possible, and, and find other mediums. I mean, we, the reason we're doing the gel for this is because other people use it and say it's accurate, so then you get a contrast. We're using the, the pork, the freshest pork roast we can get, and then we're using the uh, gel. We a good contrast, we have kind of a control with it, you see both of them. So just going ahead and taking gel and going, this is living tissue, I get tired. Yeah, that's not I even I don't buy that, accurate. it doesn't even look that way to me. So. No. Oh yeah. Very well. well.